I'm excited to share this free rig with the animation community. It was designed with a beginner in mind. So if you have just started animating or have never animated, this rig is for you. Now let's take a look at the rig and how it's designed with the beginner in mind and all the different features it has to complete all these beginning exercises that you need to do to start your animation journey. There's also a picker involved that is a very convenient and nice way to go about navigating the rig. So let's jump in. To bring in the rig into your scene, you want to reference it in. If you're not familiar with reference, that basically just brings a copy, an instance of the actual rig file so that it can stay clean and untouched. And we bring a copy of it into our animation scene and we can mess it around and do animation and do whatever we need to do. And the original rig file will stay clean and untouched and preserved. So that's why we create a reference. We don't just open the rig file itself and animate that. We always want to bring in a reference. So you can hit Control R or go to File, Create Reference to bring up this window. And when you download the rig, you'll find a few folders. And the rig is located in the Scenes folder. So we can open that and currently at the time of recording, it's version 13. So we can create reference and we'll get this little pop up that basically just asks you to credit Animator's Journey wherever you post this online, whether it's Instagram or any other social media. If you can just tag us, that would be great. So that's all that we ask in, in exchange for using this free rig. So you may get a kind of washed out look in Maya 2024 at least. So currently what you can do is go to Render Viewport 2.0, open the option box, and you can actually change the light intensity from 3.14 back down to one, and you'll get the kind of expected color scheme. And this is the rig. It looks humble and overly simplistic, but there's a lot hidden here that we're gonna uncover that basically creates a transformer type rig where there's all these rigs hidden within this simple ball rig. So why is this also good for beginners? Because we want something simplistic. We don't get it, want to get too complicated yet. You can notice there's no eyes, there's no mouth. And my opinion is no beginner should be animating a full body character with an eyes and mouth. It's a distraction from what you should really be focusing on, which are the fundamentals and the physics and the principles of animation, which you can do with a very simple rig. And we'll see that this rig actually gets quite complex as well as you grow as a beginning animator. So how do we start animating? We can basically just select it and start animating the control curves here. Now, one really convenient feature of this rig is the fact that it does come with a picker. It is an MG picker, and you might have noticed some other folders in this in what you downloaded. And one of them is a packaged version of MG picker. You can also download the animator version from their website, which is free to use if you're just using pickers that have been created in it and distributed by people like me. Um, it's free to use. So it's, it's a total free thing to download. And once you install it, which is a drag and drop op operation, you basically just take the file that you download and drag and drop it into the viewport of Maya. And uh, I recommend having the custom shelf open so that those buttons actually get loaded into your custom shelf. And the one we're interested in is the red one. It is the animator mode picker. So if we open up the picker, all we need to do is navigate to where that picker was saved, which is in the pickers folder, which you as part of the downloads that you will have received. So we can go to open picker after clicking the three dots here. And here we can see that we have a actual pickers folder right under the installation folder that, that comes inside the download. So we had our rig in the scenes folder, we have our picker here, and we have the program that we need to install inside of Maya, a drag and drop process in that folder. So I'm gonna go to pickers and I'm gonna navigate into the .mg picker uh, file format, and I'm just gonna grab that and click open, and that's all you need to do. There's our picker. And it has similar navigations in Maya, so you can Alt, middle mouse click, and also Alt, right click to zoom in and out, and then you can always hit F to frame up on the whole thing. So it's contextual too. So as the rig kind of morphs and transforms into more complicated rigs, the picker is gonna change with it as well. But first, before we can use the picker, we want to assign the namespace, which is something that's related to referencing in a rig. Every time you reference something in, it comes with a namespace, which is basically all the text right before the colon inside the name here. So all we have to do to achieve that is select any control on the rig, click the N for namespace in the picker, and then click this little arrow here to populate that field with what we have selected and then click set. Now you can see that this button has been highlighted because I have this controller highlighted. So I can select this and now you can see the main mover is highlighted as well. 
I'm gonna click anti-aliasing just so we get an, a cleaner viewport view here. So we could toggle down the outliner now, now that we have our picker, and we could also turn off the curves. I could hit Alt-1, and now we have our clean scene where we're not kind of distracted by the control curves of the rig anymore. And we could animate straight from the picker, and we could move this around and set keys. Now let's jump into the cool features of this rig and why I call it the extreme ball rig. So if you look down here in the bottom left, which is behind me right now, let me move this over here. We have rig type. So uh, we also have ball type. So I like this ball because you can see uh, what the front is versus the side. And it gives you kind of tracking points on the ball to track rotations and translations. Um, visually in the viewport. So this is why I like this version of the ball type, which is called cross. Now in here, you can see all the other types. So we could have a tennis ball, we could have a beach ball, we could have a uh, different kind of stripe ball, a diamond, a ping pong ball, a bowling ball, and a football, which I asked uh, my Twitter followers whether I should call this a soccer ball or football and football definitely won. So we have all those different types of balls that we can use and maybe I could add some in the future. Let me know in the comments if you have any that you'd like to see included for the next one. So I'm gonna leave this on cross for now. And the next cool feature here is the rig type. And this is where the rig really shines. So if you wanna do maybe some more complex things in your animations starting out like squash and stretch, let me turn back on the control curves now so you can kind of see the visual representation on the rig, what this correlates to from the picker. We actually have these squash and stretch controls on the top and bottom. And you'll also notice that this interior control actually scales with it. And so you can rotate the ball within the amount of squash and stretch that you're doing. And this squashes and stretches kind of automatically to preserve volume. Now you'll see these two controls and this allows for kind of offset animation if you need a secondary or inner control to do different kinds of animation here. Now be aware if you start using the squash and stretch controls, you can actually move the entire ball away from the rig if you were to translate both of these. So just be aware of that when you're doing squash and stretch. And that's also why I included this inner control so if I look from a front view and you only use the top stretch node, you can see you've actually shifted the center point of the ball above the controller that may be moving it. So if we're trying to track the center of the ball, what we could do is either use both squash and stretch to bring the center back towards the outer control, the main one that we'd be using to animate, or we could use this inner control to do that and offset the animation that way. It's up to you and there's many different ways you could use this rig. So that is the complex rig and we're gonna jump to the next one now. Now we have the tail, which is an FK chain on a tail and you can see the picker updates automatically. Now what's cool about the tail is you can actually spin it around the character. So if you want it on a different side, you can you know, change that. Sometimes people start their animation and they've, you know, started it and they're looking down the tail and they're like, oh no, I wanted it going left to right. Well, that's not a problem. You can actually just shift this around to uh, correspond to wherever you need. If you've, you know, been animating in the complex mode and then you turn the tail and you realize you've oriented everything the wrong way, it's not a problem to fix that. So uh, back in tail, what you can do is actually double click on the end here and it'll select all the tail controls. And of course, we also have the select all button here, which was select, selects everything on the rig, except for this one, which I will fix <laughs> in, in the command by the time you download this, as well as the mover extra, it looks like. Um, so I'm still <laughs> testing things out. And of course, if you find any issues with the rig, just let me know and I'll, I'll uh, issue an update. So by the time you uh, download this, there'll be some updates to it. But basically we have uh, double click options here for the FK chain. And we can do that all the way down the chain, which is really helpful for an FK chain to uh, not have to click drag, select everything. And sometimes you can see I accidentally selected the outer control when I did that. So that's a good example of how we can also click and drag here and why there's an advantage to using the picker instead of in the viewport, you can accidentally select more things where we have a nice clean outline here in the picker. So moving on to the next rig type, we have tail simple, which is just uh, no squash and stretch. It gives you a simple way to block out your animation without all those uh, crazy curves on the rig in case you do wanna visualize your animation with curves on while you're working. And the next one is my favorite is the legs. So now you can see everything changed again in the picker and we have legs, 
but there's no controls for the feet or and everything squashed down. And that's to accommodate, you know, having all these different kind of transformer rigs in one rig. Um, and how we resolve getting those controls back is using the legs blend option here. So we can actually blend, and as we blend, um, it goes to the right height for the leg length, and it turns on all the controls that we see here in the picker that we'd like to use. So be aware of that. Sometimes I've noticed uh, students of mine where they will turn on legs, but then they're using the picker and will uh, manually do this. Um, and then you're kind of guessing where the height of the default legs is. So definitely use this and go to 10. Um, it also gives you a way to animate. These values are animatable. If you wanted to transform this stuff on, you can do that as well. And of course, there's also ball scale, which I haven't mentioned yet, which is here and, and should scale everything nicely. So with the legs on, you can see we have an uh, IK setup by default. There's also an FK chain here, which I don't really use much because um, there's just uh, not a huge reason uh, or preference for myself to, to use FK legs that much, but they are there. And it's this little blue cross, which is represented by a blue square in the picker. And you can turn FK on if you like. And then there's also, of course, all the foot roll controls that you would expect to see in uh, a foot rig. So we have the rock, we have the roll, and we have, uh, let's see, the anti-pop stuff. So uh, for knee pops, you can turn on anti-pop and it'll kind of auto stretch the joints or you can manually animate those with the length controls. And then we also have a little attribute here actually for the tongue of the shoe. Um, I kind of forgot that I put that in there. And <laughs> it's a cool little feature to add some overlapping action and subtle animation to the rig. Um, so this is the legs rig. And then we can also, of course, add the tail to this as well. So it's a combination of all the rigs you've seen up to this point and has all the features that you'd expect. So when also you're visualizing this stuff and I hit Alt-1, you can see these little arrows here are still visible. Those are hidden by going to show viewport and turning off dimensions, which is, which is at the top here. So if we turn off dimensions, we, we can get rid of those kind of IK pull vector indicators. And that's our rig and we can use our picker and uh, affect all of that stuff. There's one other hidden cool feature in this that I wanna share, which are these trackers that come from the display layers inside of Maya. So there's display layers where we can hide the shoes, we can hide the legs, and we can actually turn on trackers and track the endpoints or the of the knees, the toes, the heel, because what ends up happening when we have the shoes or the legs turned on is let's say we use the roll attribute in the foot rig and we want to roll the foot up. Well, the control is remaining here when what we're changing is the roll attribute. So if I move the heel here and I look, the, the pivot is still here. If I move the roll all the way up, the pivot is still back here. So how do we actually track the heel? And that's through these tracking uh, pieces of geo that I added that you can use to ghost through the visualize, uh, open, open ghosting editor and ghost that geometry here. Um, and, or you can always just turn that off, but it's kind of a hidden feature here. And there's also, like I said, for the knees to track the knees, which, you know, popping knees is always an issue for beginners. And there's also uh, trackers on the inside of the ball here. You can see at different points of the hips and the uh, front uh, kind of radius uh, 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 diameter around the ball, you can get all these tracking markers. If you're having difficulty tracking issues with your animation, you can use those features to help aid that, either using the ghosting menu or motion trails, however you choose to do it. So that is the Extreme Ball Rig, and I hope you have a ton of fun with it. If you wanna learn about how to animate a walk cycle with this, I also created a animation tutorial for that, which is part of the Animator's Journey beginner course, which this rig is from, and my students, uh, mentee students have been using for the last couple of years and have really enjoyed and made some great animations with. So I hope you enjoy this, and please credit Animator's Journey when you get the chance, and because I'd love to see the animations you make with this, so please do tag me at Animator's Journey so that I can see the awesome work that you're making. I look forward to seeing what you do. Thanks for watching.